We looked recently at lucky imaging, a process in which an astrophotographer or an astronomer stacks hundreds or even thousands of images, perhaps even tens of thousands, in order to get a finished product that is better than what an individual photo could be. The process of acquiring the imagery is something we'll cover in other videos, but essentially involves shooting a great deal of underexposed images for short exposure times. The exposure times are kept as short as possible to defeat atmospheric distortion. The theory behind lucky imaging was developed many years ago and often used as a technique to defeat such atmospheric distortion when filming bright objects within the solar system, such as the moon or the planets. Though advances in technology have made lucky imaging viable for the filming of deep sky objects as well. For more information on that, see the previous video, Lucky Imaging, How to Beat Atmospheric Distortion. What we're going to look at in this video is how to actually do lucky imaging. There are several good stacking apps out there, but I have two favorites. There's a really good stacking program called AutoStacker, available free if you ever want to take a look at it. The link is above. I won't call it intuitive, but once you understand stacking, its interface is clear and concise. But time has changed things. And if you're just getting into astrophotography now, or even if you've been at it a while, I highly recommend Cyril. Cyril has got to be one of the best applications out there. Approaching the power of the paid application, PixInsight. It is an extremely powerful tool for aligning and stacking images, but also an incredible image developer. In later videos, we'll take a closer look at using Cyril to develop imagery. Cyril gives you incredible manual control over the stacking process, but it does a superb job stacking everything automatically. And in a few moments, it can turn rough individual subframes, like this one, into this. I shot this image of an emission nebula last night, on a bitingly cold night that also happened to be wonderfully clear. It was a painful night to be out in, but that's just life for we Canadian astrophotographers. Anyway, let's get into the meat of this episode, and explore how to use Cyril to stack your own images. By default, Cyril is going to want you to use calibration frames. Those are biases, darks, flats, and dark flats. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. We'll come to that in a later video. The beauty of Cyril, though, is we can use very simple scripts to use any or all of the calibration frames that we might have available. And there's also a script that allows us to use only lights in case we have no calibration frames available. There are certain circumstances, such as shooting the moon, where often calibration frames are hardly necessary. And I can tell you, shooting here in the dark skies of the Canadian Northwoods, there have been a few nights where I've just, frankly, been much too cold to bother gathering calibration frames. While it is generally a good idea to get calibration frames, with a good modern camera and equipment, there are circumstances where it really is hardly necessary. So to begin with, you need to go over to the Cyril website and download Cyril. The link is provided below in the description. Once you have Cyril installed, you're going to look to the upper right at the three upper lines of the menu icon. Go ahead and click on it and go down to Get Scripts. At the bottom of the page will be a list of scripts for Cyril that enable you to quickly and easily stack subframes without the use of biases, darks, flats, or dark flats, your choice which. And you have your choice of scripts for color or monochrome cameras, or you can just go with both. Download the scripts, then go to your download folder and copy them. Then go to the folder where you keep your Cyril files. On a Windows system, that will be the C drive under Program Files, Cyril, Scripts. And copy all those scripts to there. If you had Cyril open, close it, then reopen it. Otherwise, just open it. Now in the future, if you shoot an astro image and you have all of your calibration frames, that's great. But if you don't have any of them or any particular group of them, you have scripts for that. And with these scripts, you can do your processing very quickly and easily. Later on, we'll also take a look at how to stack manually in Cyril. It's not that hard and you might come to like the additional control that it gives. Now we're going to assume that you've already taken a bunch of subframes of whatever astro image that you wanted to shoot. By the way, I find that Cyril works better for deep sky objects such as galaxies and nebulae. If imaging planets or the moon, try AutoStackert. It just seems to go faster and give better results. And if you don't know how to use AutoStackert, don't sweat it. We'll cover that one in a later video. So before you stack under Cyril using the scripts, what you're going to need to do is copy all of your frames into appropriate folders. Biases go into a subfolder called Biases, Darks into a subfolder called Darks, Flats into a subfolder called Flats, and Lights into a subfolder called Lights. Pretty obvious, right? Now I actually took several hundred frames of NGC 7822, but during the night while I was asleep and the telescope was doing its work, some partial cloud cover rolled in. So only 53 images came out well. But we're going to work with what we have. And going forward by using the scripts, 
it could hardly be easier. Now you might notice I'm using a file type called fit files here. And unless you've done astrophotography before, fit might be new to you. Fits are an old format that's been used in professional astrophotography by astronomers and even NASA for quite a long time. And they remain popular within the community. In fact, Cyril is designed to work with fits. If you don't have fits files, don't worry. Cyril can convert it. We'll cover how at the end of this video. So now onto the actual stacking. As you're going to see when using a script, it could hardly be easier. At the top left of the Cyril application, notice the home icon. Click it and select the folder that your lights and calibration frames are in. Now we're going to go over just a bit to the right and select the scripts drop down menu. If you have all of your calibration frames, simply select OSC preprocessing. If you don't have darks or flats, select OSC preprocessing without darks or flats. And if you don't have any calibration frames, select OSC preprocessing DBF, meaning without darks, biases, and flats. There's also a very nice option for OSC preprocessing with Drizzle. Drizzle is a technique for enhancing low data images. That probably also sounds like Greek this early in the game, but Drizzle is a topic we'll cover later on, as sometimes it can come in handy for improving images, but it's not a cure-all. It comes at the expense of additional noise. In the future, we'll probably do a video on specifically what Drizzle is and how it works. Now, if you look at the text screen on the right, you'll see that Cyril is doing its magic. It's going to take just over two and a half minutes to stack all these images. So let's come back to it. All right, all of our images have been stacked and we're just going to navigate over to the open button on the top left. And the result of our stacking is that icon that says result lifetimes.fit. We'll double click on it to open it up in Cyril. Now we'll just navigate down to the lower inner right of the application, select the display mode button and select high definition, then come back and select auto stretch. This will give us a rough, but unenhanced and unedited view of what our final product looks like. Cyril is not just a superb stacker, but it is also a superb astro image editor. It is so powerful, in fact, that it'll take us more than one episode to cover what it can do. And that too, we'll get to in a future episode. But earlier I noted that if you have an astro camera capable of taking images in the FITS format, you should do so, especially for astrophotography. Many astro image editors are just designed to work best with it. But if you don't have FITS photos, you can convert them all easily within Cyril. Just go to the tabs in the upper right menu, go all the way over to the left, and select the tab called Conversion. Go down about three quarters of the way in that window and hit the plus button. It will open up a file explorer. Navigate to whatever folder your files are in, select all the ones you want to convert, and hit the Add button. All those files will now appear in the Conversion tab. If you want a new name for the converted files, put it now in the sequence name space. Cyril does not restrict you to converting to FITS. You can convert those files to a number of different formats. The Format Option button is just to the right of where you can name your files. But as we noted for Cyril, you're going to need FITS, and it really is best for astrophotography. After that, simply hit the Convert button below and in a few moments, all your files will be converted. Cyril is complex and powerful, but not overly so. Once you come to understand the basic principles of working with astrophotography images, Cyril will very quickly, I think, come to make perfect sense to you. And now's a great time to get in on it, because it looks as if Cyril is going to become the astro imaging processing software of the future.